Well, I'm Bruce Yaney, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to take a look at a couple devices that demonstrate two of my favorite topics, pendulums and chaos. Now, let's take a closer look. The piece is fairly simple. It's a wooden frame that has a metal plate that's glued to the wooden base of it. The top part of the pendulum bar is supported by two outlets, and at the other end we have a bolt that's screwed into the bar, and a magnet can stick to the head of the bolt. The simplest setup would just start with one magnet on the base. In this case, the magnets are attracting. Now let's try it again, this time with two magnets. When investigating magnetic pendulums, I found there were a few different variables that could affect its behavior. The first one, of course, is going to be the number of magnets that are put on the plate. A second factor would be how the magnets are arranged on the plate and whether they are attracting or repelling the magnet that's on the pendulum. There's any number of patterns that the magnets could be arranged in. They could be arranged symmetrically or asymmetrically. You can even try as many magnets as you can fit on the plate. In this case, it's about 27. It looks like it might be a little bit too much for this bar, so another possibility is trying a different bar and adding more mass to it. Now let's take a look at the magnetic field. If I cover the magnets with a piece of paper and I start sprinkling some iron filings on it, we can then see a visual representation of those fields of force. Those white areas in between each magnet shows areas of weak magnetic fields due to the repelling of the same magnetic poles. If the poles had been opposite, we'd see attractive lines of force. I can show that by switching the magnet in the center and sprinkling more iron filings on it. We see that the outer magnets are repelled by each other, but they're attracted to the one in the center. Now going back to the pendulum, when all the magnets are repelling, we'll see that the bar magnet tends to follow the white areas where the magnetic fields are the weakest. I'll switch the pole on the bar magnet and we'll try it again. With this setup, it looks like the bar magnet tends to follow directly over top of the magnets on the base. And that makes sense since it's attracted to them. Now while these pieces may be interesting to watch, they can serve a useful purpose. For example, this particular piece has been sitting on my desk for years. I call it the executive decision maker. As you can see, I have the words yes and no here, and the bar is attracted to the magnets underneath it. So I could have a student ask me a question such as, uh, Mr. Yaney, are we having homework tonight? And they could release the bar. The answer is, not. no, they're not. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, will everyone like this video? Ah, well, I hope that's the case. To make it a bit more complex, we can add more options to it. Perhaps you have a question you want answered. If you ask it, I'll see if I can get you an answer. <laughs> the answer is when pigs fly. I think that's supposed to be a no. Releasing the bar from the same position doesn't necessarily give the same results. That's due to tiny changes in how I release it is going to contribute to chaotic changes of the pendulum. Now, if you're interested in recording the path of the pendulum, one possibility I found is to use phosphorescent paper and then attach a small laser to the pendulum bar itself. Wherever the violet laser strikes the paper, it'll cause it to glow. Without the magnets underneath, we can get some really interesting pictures. These are called leisure juice patterns. Once again, without any magnets, this time I'll try and release the bar in a straight line.
I've replaced the magnets, now let's see the difference. It may start out as a Lisa Jude's pattern until the magnets interfere with the movement. This time I'll try and release it in a straight line. Now I do have one more to show you. This one was extremely easy to build, and yet it works just as well as the other two. So let's give it a try. This version is made on top of a paint can. It has two paint stirs that are duct taped to the sides of the can as the supports. A third paint stir is glued to the supports, which then supports a paperclip eyelet. The pencil pendulum uses a paperclip as a hook at the top. Two nuts are added to the bottom of the pencil for added mass, and the magnet will stick to that bottom nut. To finish up, one paperclip is hooked into another one, Add a couple magnets, and it's ready to go. Well, as you can see, this experiment's not too hard to put together, and it's fascinating to watch. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you for watching. Okay, bye. <laughs>